I don't know if you guys have already seen articles like this saying that the next versions of Chrome, Edge, and a future version of Firefox are about to break a bunch of websites or they're gonna completely break the internet. You know, we got headlines like this one saying serious warning for millions of Edge, Firefox, and Chrome users. So the reason for this is that these browsers are all about to hit version number 100. Chrome and Edge, which both use the same browser engine, by the way, they are currently on version 99 in their stable branch, and 100 is going to be coming out at the end of the month, I think March 26. And Firefox is currently on version 97, so they're going to be hitting version 100 soon also. So the problem lies in this three-digit version number, version 100, and the fact that a lot of websites are going to be expecting a two-digit version number, okay? So anytime you connect to a website, you're sending an identification to it uh, that's called a user agent, which is used to tell what operating system you're using, uh, which browser and which version of the browser you're using. Now, this might sound like just some spooky thing that's gonna be used to track you or fingerprint what devices you're using. And in some cases, it does get used that way, but it has many legitimate purposes as well. Uh, so for example, if you have a website where people are able to download some kind of app and it's a cross-platform app, it's probably going to be more convenient for that website to take you to the page of whatever platform you're on. So like if you're using a Mac, you probably want to download the Mac version. If you're on Windows, you probably want the Windows version. Or if you're browsing the internet on your phone, you probably want the mobile version of that website and not the desktop one, because it's gonna look crazy. And some sites, they might just straight up block access to the site or their services, or they might show you a warning message if you're using a older version of the browser, like if it's too old and they know that it's not gonna be compatible with everything on the site, they tell you, hey, you should really go ahead and upgrade your browser. Don't go emailing us or trying to report a bug on the site because you're using like Firefox version three. Or in some cases, you might see a website block access to you if you're using a much older browser version. Usually you see this with things like companies where you need to go through some type of web portal to access their systems. They might restrict your ability to access it if you're using an older browser version because they think, oh, you know, that's uh, vulnerable to all of these different security holes. And so we don't want some hacker to basically use your computer to get into our systems. But anyway, you get the picture. Uh, there's a bunch of legitimate reasons to do this. And the code that's running on either the front end or the back end of the web server, probably in the front end, uh, but obviously it can depend on how it's written, uh, it might not be able to handle those three digit version numbers because they're expecting it to be two digits. And when it gets to three, uh, it's going to error out or more than likely it's just going to cut off that third digit. So it's kind of similar to what we saw with the Y2K bug, which ended up not actually being that big of a deal, but in case you didn't know what that was all about, it pretty much boiled down to the fact that whenever computers were storing dates, okay, they would store the year as a two digit number, like 22 for 2022. But without doing any bug fixes, there would be no way for a computer system to differentiate 1922 from 2022. And so you can imagine the kind of downstream issues that that would cause if records could be off by a century more. So, so with this, the maintainers of different websites really need to make sure that every process on their site that is parsing these user agents, and there could be many areas where this is going on, uh, both in the front end and the back end, they need to make sure that those processes are able to handle three digit version numbers and not just cut them off because then they're going to be thinking that Chrome version 100 is maybe Chrome version 00 or something crazy like that. And then they give you this warning saying, hey, your browser is out of date or again, possibly restricting access to the site depending on whatever the logic is what for what they do with that uh, version number. And you know what's funny is that this isn't even the first time we've had this kind of issue with browser version strings. 
uh, specifically, there's this old Opera blog post from back in the day when it was actually a good browser, talking about how them incrementing to browser version 10 was breaking some sites because back then most user agent versions were just getting parsed as one digit. So we see again, people uh, not really learning from history. If we take a look at this web bugs GitHub repo and we filter the uh, label by version 100 to pretty much see uh, bugs that are related to this. We can see so many different websites that have been listed as not working or being partially broken by these user agents, which you can set in your browser, by the way. Um, so these are not really hard coded. Like if you're a developer um, or there's even add-ons that let you do this very easily, but uh, you can spoof your user agent. In fact, uh, there's instructions for how to do this on uh, Mozilla's blog post. Um, so here they tell you how to do it in Firefox Nightly, and then they also tell you how to do it in Chrome. And so this is really something that you should be doing as a developer. You probably played with this already for older versions of the browser just to see if maybe they break. Um, or like if your website is broken on them, but it would be a good idea to roll it forward to version 100 to make sure that your site isn't going to be broken. And there's probably a lot of sites out there that are going to have issues with this. Like we can see right now, there's like 27 um, open and 30 that have been closed, but even uh, major websites like yahoo.com, right? There's many uh, different bugs that are getting listed uh, as a result of this, and we can see that they're in different areas, like top horizontal <laughs> navigation bar is not fixed, um, and then something like the icon missing from the mail button. So even major corporations are susceptible to this. In fact, and yeah, I get it. Yahoo, oh, they're a major corporation. I mean, yeah, there's still a multi-billion dollar company behind them. Um, but yeah, they're even susceptible to this and maybe more susceptible because with uh, companies like Yahoo, you know, they've been around for a few decades and there's probably a lot of really old legacy code on there that the people who originally wrote it have been retired for many years. And so you've got other people trying to maintain it. And that's always something that can be a little bit tough because um, different people might have different styles of coding. So it, it can be a little bit difficult to try to maintain someone else's code especially when it's older code that might have been using different conventions. Uh, so because this issue is so widespread and it basically requires every developer to update their user string validation if they didn't already account for three digit strings, Firefox and Google are also planning to issue a Band-Aid fix to the browsers if problems end up being very widespread by simply freezing the version numbers at 99. So they're basically just going to spoof the user agent to be something older that the sites can actually handle uh, to give people time to go ahead and fix their legacy spaghetti code. Uh, so for the vast majority of you out there, this isn't even really going to be a problem. You know, a lot of it is just clickbait headlines because if you're someone who just uses the browser, like if you're not maintaining sites, then you don't really have to do anything. It's it's on the developers of those sites to fix their sites and Chrome, Firefox, they're just going to go ahead and freeze it if they notice a lot of issues. Um, now, obviously, if you do end up seeing this, all you can really do is either spoof the user agent yourself if you end up having problems before Chrome and Firefox issue a fix, or you can just report it to the developers or whoever is in charge of running the site and they'll get somebody to fix it on their end. Uh, so anyway, good luck with the bug fixing guys. Leave a like and comment on this video to hack the algorithm. Have a great rest of your day.